he had moved to a place in life where he no longer expected anything to change. And then Zechariah, you know, he didn't expect anything to be different. When he went in the temple, that, I mean, when he come out of the temple, as when he went in the temple, he didn't really expect anything to be different because it had been the same thing over and over. And it looked like there weren't going to be any change. So, you know, it is possible to miss God moving it whenever our lives are focused on what is just in front of us. And, and he, he, um, he knew that no matter what, when he went in the temple, when he come out of the temple, Aaron was still going to be in charge. The Roman was still going to occupy his homeland. And the Jews were still going to be subject to oppression. And, you know, he'd been in and out several times. And before he was duty, he said he just knew it was going to be the same thing. And, you know, it, the practice of religious ceremonies alone, you know, it cannot change or make us ready to change. We need a divine, divine encounter, a divine meeting that goes way beyond our expectations. Because Zachariah would go in there and perform his duty, but he didn't really expect anything to change. And, 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 and just when, <coughs> I'm sorry, you know, even when our lives are filled with doubts and questions, you know, God can come, God can come along and show up at, with a word of hope and promise. And see, Zachariah meeting with the angel, it left him unable to speak. He must have, but he had to continue his priestly duty. Everything had to be done in South. He couldn't even tell it this book hot about the angel. He couldn't tell her anything because he couldn't talk. And and the angel told him he'd be like that until the birth of uh, John. He said, You're gonna have a son, he's gonna name him John. And he said, and when when the angel told him all this, and here he was. You know, more like in our word today. You know, when we, in our word today, you know, it, it, it continues. It's continued tragic events of loss of black lives by law enforcement as well as black on black violence. It makes many, many of us wonder, you know, would anything ever change? We've, we've come a long way, but we got just as far to go. Because as we see, you know, it's like we going into a reversal back to where we were in the days of Jim Crow. And you see, there's been marches, there's been prayer visions, and even a worldwide pandemic. And none of it has changed. We're still seeing them die. Loss of life. Now, God may want us to bring, may want to use us to bring about change. And that's why we have to Stay as best we can tune on to God. But it's going to be hard. That's no doubt about it. You done been and you done seen and it looked like there has been no change. And see, um, and, you know, we, we prayed a while back, we, years ago, our ancestors, and they prayed for segregation to end in public places. But Jim Crow just held on. They held on tight until four students sat down at the lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina. And see, when they went there, they had no idea what their action would come. But God used them in an effort to answer us, answer to pray. Amen. They said, you know, they were tired of the way they've been treated, tired of the way that their people have been treated. So they dared, they, they stepped out on faith. They sat down at the lunch counter. And that was something none of us had dared to do before. So God used them to answer a prayer. And he used them to start breaking the chain to let us know a change could come. And so, you know, we prayed and then we had we had actions, you know, uh, of so many different things. Look at uh, Booker T. Washington, founded the school in Alabama. If he had listened to all the doubts, he would never have done anything. There was, he founded Tuskegee Institute in uh, Alabama. And then one of the most famous professors from that school, Dr. George Washington Carver. 
Now, if they had listened to God, we would never have had that. But they had a vision and they prayed. It's, the time was hard then, very hard for them. Just like it's hard for us now, but it's harder for them then. And yet, look what they accomplished. They were great professors, they found a great black institution of learning. That was just great. And, and, and then, you know, the angel made Zechariah speechless because of his doubt. And if we if we look at that, um, he you say he might say, well, wonder why was he because just because he doubted, why would he make him speechless? But from reading the reading the lesson and everything, research, um, <clears throat> he wasn't punishing him per se, but when he saw the doubt in Zachariah's heart, he knew the doubt could be just like an infection. It could spread. Mm -hmm. And if someone of Zachariah's uh, uh, standard, being a priest, they've been following God's command here in Israel. If someone like him would have doubt, that would rub off on some of the other people who were not, maybe not as strong as he was. That's right. So to keep a doubt, you think about when uh, they sent out the 12 spies to go check out the land. Well, Caleb and Joshua came back all excited. The man, this is it. We, we, we need to go up there and get it. We can get this. Well, we got this. But then the other 10 said, I know it's beautiful. It's a land. said, yes, yeah, it's full of milk and honey. There ain't no doubt about it. said, well, have you seen the giants in that land? We can't handle this. said, those people are big. So they make us look like grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. So the people in made it started getting woof. Well, that's the way it is. I'm scared. We, we, we can't do that. I doubt when it went through the whole area. And they end up walking around the wilderness for all those years. When they could have been maybe been in the promised land. But because the ten spies was afraid, and they said, uh-oh, -uh, we can't do that. They, they showed the land is flowing, milk and honey, no doubt about that. But it looks like to me, they, they got those people Big people making us look like grasshopper walking around. They they gonna slaughter us, and it scared the people to death. So by Zechariah not having having doubt, and Zechariah just figured, well now how in the world you know all this time I've been here, now I waited till we got old. Apparently he didn't know about Abraham. That could have been before time or whatever. Uh, but he said now nah, all this time we've only been here now you know. It ain't likely to happen now. Um, and Gabriel was trying to, you know, tell him, brought him good news, but he wasn't ready for it because he, he had waited so long and he was so beat down. Mm -hmm. And so when the, <clears throat> when the, the angel made him mute, so he said, you know, she told him, you're not going to say a word until John is, is born. And he, he was speechless, but like I said, the maiden's feet, he was so doubtful that it would happen at their age. He he was a good person. He had faith in God. But but he waited so long, he was worn down. He was tired. He was just really just beat down with the things and how they had to live under the Romans. So sometimes, and it says that, you know, sometimes it's better. It said there are times when we are better off not being able to share our doubts. And if we got doubts sometimes, it says you're better off that you don't share them. You pray about them, you ask God about them, and ask God to help you with see what you what it is you're supposed to be seeing. And it says, uh, you know, there are also times when our doubts should be muted for our faith to grow. Are there, are there any comments? Uh, yeah, yes, I, 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 I think I'm to myself, a whole lot of people, you know, like you said, doubt, and, and, and they don't, you know, some of them didn't have faith, but all God wants want us to do, have faith in Him and nobody but Him, and turn, you know, turn yourself over to Him and do what. Do his will. 
and do what he would ask you to do or have you to do. Because nobody can't do you like God do. God got all the power. He got all the safety. He got it all. So all this outside stuff, you need to leave it alone and go to God for it. So he got the answer to everything you need. I don't, but he do. Yes. And yes. he can fix anything wrong. Yes. I can't, but he can't. So he got it all. So yes. what he's telling us, forget your doubt and think about me. It's all about me, not about you. And if you notice, in, in some of these with Abraham, then with Zechariah, and Elizabeth, God is waiting until they just about gave up. And he showed up. He showed up to let them know, I haven't forgotten you. I can still work the miracle. Yeah. But sometimes we wait and then we get tired. Sometimes we revive ourselves a little bit and we still get tired. We, we get weary. And the load sometimes is kind of heavy to carry. So therefore, like, just like uh, Zachariah, it, he had the faith in God. They kept the laws and he was committed to God. He was committed to uh, Elizabeth. But he was just worn down with all the stuff going on in his day when the Romans treated him just like we're going through in our day now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I can understand Zachariah some. I can understand. I know he had faith in God. We all have faith in God. Mm -hmm. We want to do, we worship the Lord, we come to his house, we, we support his ministry, and, and, and you know, but we still fall short sometimes. Amen. We do. We do. So, you know, I, I, like I said, I understand Zachariah and his little doubt, so I understand that. We all we go through some stuff like that. Yeah, we do. We have some times when we get up some days and seem like nothing goes right. right. So we thank God that it's as well as it is. And we thank God that we have learned enough to learn how to turn to Him in our time of need. That's right, Tom. When you, you got a problem, you thinking about God already done figured it out for you. I know. He already done figured it out. But since you don't know that sometimes we still worry. Yeah, we do. We do. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's why we, we got to pray. Yes. And turn it over to him, saying, this is not our problem, it's yours. You need to fix it, not me, because I can't. Well, sometimes we turn it over to God, but sometimes God don't fix it in time enough for us to go back and get it. Then we mess it up. Then we get back to God. Yeah. And sometimes, like you see, so we don't leave it with him long enough for him to fix it. Yeah. But when you turn it over to him, like you said, we got to turn it over to him and leave it there. Don't go back and pick it up. I know. That's a hard thing, and that's something we all have to learn from time to time. That's right. It's a process. It's uh -huh. not just a one-time thing. That's right. And we have to learn to give God our problems. That's right. That's right. And sometimes we don't have, God knows we're going to act like Zachariah sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because you don't pray for something for so long and so many years, you say, well, maybe I won't go to heaven. And, and by the time you give up on it, God shows up with it. Uh -huh. Are there any other comments? Yes, ma'am. I thank God for letting me be able to stand up there and teach that awesome lesson. And I thank God for you. Working so hard, teaching me, teaching us this word, and feeding us to God. Just thank God for it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, so thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other comments? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Lord. Yes, ma'am.
today we want to say thank you. We want to thank each and every one for joining in on today. At this time, we'll have someone from the past for a remark from someone from the past. There is a consequence in that of what the Lord would do. At this time, we are we are have our reading for the secretary, for the city and secretary. Chapel in St. Stephen Sunday Church School on December 24, 2022. <coughs> Sunday School was called to order at 10.05 by Deacon May. Opening song was Near the Cross by Mother Barnes. Prayer was given by Reverend Faison. Lesson topic was God's Promise. Background passage Luke 1, 5-23. He verse but the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for the prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Luke 1, 13. The lesson was reviewed for 25 minutes by Trustee Wooten. Remarks were given by a representative from the class. Attendance is 22 in-house, 9 online, for a total of 31. Offering is $38. The weather is cool. All offices remain the same. City Secretary, Sister Lois Lewis. <coughs> Again, we want to thank you, uh, Brother Lewis, for uh, stepping in and participating. At this time, going a little too fast. You had heard the reading of the minute. Is there any correction? <coughs> If, if not, we're going to receive the minute as given. At, at this time, we're going to ask to stand. We just close out with word. Amen. 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 Sorry about going fast. <laughs> but it's going to be the Lord. <laughs>
great, and he shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give him unto his throne his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. I thought I would read that verse this morning because this is we it's not the time for born to be saved. But we can set aside this time to celebrate the coming of Christ. Amen. Amen. And so and we feel coming out to us at the end of this year. And and I just want to say it's not about what we can receive and what has been given to us already. Are you what I said? And not what we can receive, but if what has been given to us already. But God's the Lord, the Lord, he said, I don't forget the son. And in this verse, it was not in Jesus' yet. And this morning, I know we had a lot of time for our devotion service. So I ask you, in some form, shape, or way, help me out this morning, please. For God has been good to all of us. And I'm going to start out with uh, I'm going to open with prayer first. <coughs> Father, again, we come this morning. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence and spirit that in this place this morning. And Father God, we pray that while we hear, that you that we uplift your name. For we come to praise you and give you the glory. Thank you, Father God, for just waking up this morning. Allowing us to come this way again. But it's not because we have been so good, but because of your mercy and your grace. You have allowed us to come to this world again. We come to pray and give you the word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, the book is served and began, and you have a tough one. But whatever you are so desire to say, sing or do to the glory of God. It's time now. Amen. 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 Down at the mall where my Savior died. Down where for <coughs> drink from sin, I cried. Then to my heart was the blood of fire, singing joy and praise to his Glory to His name, precious name. Glory to my Savior's name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously <coughs> saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he stood me. Glory to His name, I'm singing. Glory to His name, precious name. Glory to my Savior's name. There to my heart was the blood. Glory to His name, I'm singing. Glory to His name, precious name. Glory to my Savior's name. There to my heart was a
Lord and Savior, Lord, Pastor Lewis, Pastor Howard, to each and every one in the building. It is a blessing to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. Because we realize we could have been another way. But God's grace and mercy allowed us to see another day. Yeah. And you know, as I was sitting there, I said, well, I'm going to get up because I don't know whether I'll see tomorrow or not. Amen. But as of now, I, just, I thank the Lord for what he's done for me. I thank yeah. for what he's going to do. Yeah. And even if he call me home, I, I still thank him because it will not for the grace of God that led me to be where I'm at today. Yeah. And, and saying that, you know, to live yeah. for him because I realize that I can't do that on my own. I need, I need, I need the Lord every step of the way. Amen. I ask you to continue praying for me, and I'll pray for you the best I know by you. Amen. 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 God certainly has been good to all of us. Amen. <coughs> Nicholas, how old are you, baby? Mm-hmm. Seven. Do you think God had me? Well, I don't know what you saw on the news that went out. Your boy at the bar shop, eight years old. Man come to the bottom shop and kill the bottom while he's telling you eight year old thing. We're blessed. We're yeah. blessed. Yeah. We're blessed. Yeah. And you heard about all the children in Rocky Mountain that we grew. Yeah. You yeah. are blessed. Yeah. Yeah. And you heard about all the children that we counseled that we you are blessed. Yeah. Yeah. We're blessed. Look, we got one, two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven, eight. Myself ain't mad. <laughs> you don't be in here. <laughs> <laughs> But we're blessed. Look at how you smile. We all got this morning. I don't think nobody has any sad news because you smile this morning. We're blessed. We're blessed. Just to be here. We're blessed. Thank you, God. And I, I, I'm also blessed with God. And just, just let y'all know, so December first, December third, first, we still have seven birthday gifts. <laughs> the whole month. Thank you. <coughs> I said this, and sometimes I, I don't come to church to laugh, and joke, and play, but I do come to worship the Lord. Yeah. I, I don't come to look sad all the time. I hear, but I'm blessed. I'm more than blessed. I'm more than blessed. Yeah. I told Ray the morning car, I said, you know my back was the morning. I mm-hmm. keep myself so I can take the room under with some pain pills so I be young when I get here this morning. Mm-hmm. But I'm still blessed. Bless, right? yeah, bless. I don't know about you, but I'm blessed. We're here this morning. Thank yeah. God. And I just praise God for <coughs> bringing us through the whole year. Here we got to near the end of another year. And we're still here. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. God. God is good. Yes, he is. And I heard this man say, if I had been called home, I'm not ready. Thank you, God. But I'm blessed because I know Jesus. Yeah. 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 He was, if you call home, you're blessed because you know Jesus. Yeah. 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 So everybody have a word. Everybody have a praise. Thank you, God. Thank you. I rise to give God praise this morning. God has been good to me. Woke me this morning and started me on my way. I nobody knows what I'm going through except myself. So I'm not even going to try to tell you what I'm going through this morning. But God has blessed me to be here. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. Thank He's blessed you to be here. Yes. We have come here this morning to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we ought to Tell somebody, look at your neighbor just there. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Because it could have been the other way. Looked at the news this morning, seven year old in Texas, abducted in her own yard and killed. 16 year old missing in Fayetteville with her one month old baby. You know, so many things are going on. But God has blessed us. And if you're able to wave your hand, you ought to just wave your hand. Don't do it for me. Amen. 
Yeah. Don't do it for me because I didn't wake you this morning. Yeah. I didn't wake you, and I'm not going to put you to sleep this morning. Yeah. But God woke you this morning. And he's speaking to you right now. And we pray uh, that the Lord will continue to strengthen and encourage us. We go through technical issues, but God is still good. And we're just thankful for everybody being in the house this morning. Just yeah. to see your sm our smiling faces behind those minds. We can see the gleam in your eyes. So we know that something good is going on in your life. So we just thank God for you. And uh, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Tell me where I'd be. If it not in for the Lord on my side. Tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Well, he sent his angels this morning to touch my body, to wake me up. And if it had not been for the Lord, I don't know where I'll be. Yes, I don't know where I'll be tomorrow. I don't know where I'll be this afternoon. Yes, yes. But I know right now, right this moment right here, I say thank you, Lord, thank for another day. Amen.
Lord, I thank you. For this day, I don't have to put all the other words that you already there, because you know what you are. Thank but Lord, you. I just thank you for the day. This is the confidence of my career. Thank you, God. So when I need something, they say that song, He Know My Name. Mm -hmm. He know. Oh, yeah. Thank you, God. He know my name. He know where I am. Yes. He know what I need. Yes. So I'm, I'm always putting something in that account. Jesus, Jesus. And you know what? When you keep on that, it draws in. God gets the best dividend that you can get. Yes. He got a high answer away. Yes. Great. He gives a great yield. All he asks you to give him a praise. That's what I need to give him a praise. Yes. And you don't have to follow when you put there at the end of the year. <coughs> Just all the way God. Give him a praise. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast out every song of sickness and poverty on sea. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast out every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease, for the devil is defeated. We are blessed, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast out every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Amen. Thank you, God, today for his grace and mercy. Another day that the Lord has blessed and kept us. I'm so glad that he has blessed us to be here one more time. Another day that the Lord has kept and blessed us. We do pray your patience with us this morning as we set the PA system without the music yesterday. So it's going to take a, a couple of adjustments. But we thank God for his grace and mercy. You know, uh, for many years, our poor parents, they did it all out the house. And all the power of life is gone. So, they would set the house on fire. Amen. I believe this morning, as we think about all that God has done for us and where He has brought us and how He has kept us, we can set the house on fire. Amen. Amen. Because God's grace and mercy has kept me. And 
And I'm delighted to be here. Give God a hand. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We're thankful for this wonderful choir. They're going to bless us uh, shortly. But first, we're going to have the announcements coming from Sister Shrest, uh, uh, Sister Shrest, Trustee Ella Pitt. Amen. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. The announcement. message is to express the immense gratitude I have for your support after the death of our loved one. Thank you for your sympathy during this difficult time. Although it is challenging, I find comfort in the fact that my church family is thinking of me and my family. I sincerely appreciate your support. Deacon James L. Knight, singer and pastor. We encourage every member of the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church to support and attend all or as many church functions as possible. We are all one body in Christ, and we need all members of the body working together to keep the body strong and productive. If you are interested in missionary temple rotation, please contact Minister Howard or Pastor Lewis. If you're interested in Bible study rotation, please contact Deacon J. May or Pastor Lewis. Reverend Dr. Earlene Williams, the author of The Lesson Will Teach Our Missionary Pepper Lesson, The God of Hope, on December 7, 2022. Pastor Lewis would like to meet with the ministry on December 17, 2022. And I believe those times have been made available to you. The pastor's vision statement, I believe that all people matter to God and that Christ message and ministry to the local church is the hope of the world. And the thought for the week, we turn to God for help when our foundations are shaken, only to learn that God is shaken. Thank you. Amen. 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 Bless you. Thank you, Trustee Pitt. At this time, we're going to have our announcements coming from Mother uh, Martha Johnson. Welcome. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. It's just good to be here. I stand before you on behalf of our pastor, Malcolm Lewis and the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church family. To say welcome, we are so glad that you chose to come and worship with us today, to fellowship with us as we try to lift up the name of the Lord. So, on behalf of each and every one of us, we say to you, welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. 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 <coughs> Thank you, Mother Johnson. This will be the first Sunday of December. We normally would recognize our seniors on the first Sunday of December, but we are pushing that back to the third Sunday. Uh, seniors, we do want to recognize you. We apologize, but uh, we are just not ready today, so we would do that on the third Sunday. But we do appreciate all of our senior citizens and all of our church family for being a part of us today. We're we'll glad to have this choir in attendance with us this morning. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead go ahead and say say this. Um, uh, during the a few weeks ago, uh, during the funeral about tonight, we when we asked the church body to stand, and the first I asked my wife to stand. Uh, I want to recognize my wife. There was an individual that was sitting beside my wife. <laughs> Whenever I asked my wife to stand, she could have crawled in a hole because she has, was sitting over there and she said, whose choir is that? Because I know that's not Anderson Chapel's choir because <laughs> that choir is not that big. But say, what I'm saying is, you better be careful who you talk about when you're sitting in the church because you never know who you're sitting next to. 
down though, it's just about the business to be here and come to one more time. <coughs> Let's go in a word of prayer this morning. <coughs> Dear gracious Father, we come this morning, Lord, as almost as we know how. Yeah. Then, Father God, we just want to thank you this morning. Yeah. Lord, you've been said this morning so many times. We thank you, God, because you have blessed us to be here on this day. Yeah. And then, Father God, we ask you to come into the house of the Lord this morning and have your way this morning, Lord. Yeah. Because, Lord, we know that you are here and we are here with you this day. And Father God, we just ask you to bless our pastor this morning. Bless our social pastor this morning. Then, Lord, we ask you to bless all that's in the house of the Lord this morning. And then, Father God, we just want to honor you this morning. For Lord, you have blessed us for a long, long time of this, for this year. You have gave us the strength. You gave us the blood in our body to keep on going as you have us to go. And Lord, thank God, you, Lord. we just said thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. And then, thank Heavenly Father, we just ask you to bless our family this morning. Yes, Lord. Or it could, like you said, it could have been the other way, but Lord, you bless our family to still be united as one this morning. Yes, we do thank you, Lord, because Lord, you bless us to have food on our table this morning. Yes. And then, Lord, we said thank you. Thank but Lord, you, Lord, we want to honor you for all the blessings for today. And then, Heavenly Father, we just ask you to bless the sick this morning, yes, wherever Lord. they may be. Yes. But Lord, you know. They, they heal them, Lord. And then, Lord, bless the grief family this morning. Let's lift them up, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Let them know, Father God, you are still yes. right there beside you. Yes. Yes. Amen, Father God. We want to thank you for all your blessing at this moment. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 the church, the relief of the poor, 
and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and sacred devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplatory in our deployment, to avoid all talent, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We more over engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Thus it is reading of our covenant and pray that you will refer to this frequently and let these words resonate within our hearts and within our bodies. For this is the covenant of the Baptist Church. We thank God for you this morning. Ushers, you may let those that are out in as we prepare for our worship and giving. God has blessed us. We have just a week or so ago celebrated Thanksgiving. And we have a lot to be thankful for. We have a lot to be thankful for. And God has blessed us to be a blessing to someone else. And God loves us. She'll forgive us. So let us give freely. As the Lord has given unto us. Amen. Amen. The ushers so shall take charge. Let me 
next gen ball of which we're going to have the meshes of the hour for the day. Originally, I was scheduled to be out of town and wasn't sure whether I would be back in town on um, today or tonight. If not, so we uh, had Minister Howard in place this morning just in case I didn't make it back. Lord so thick that uh, the flu kept us from traveling. So we are here and she is here and we all are here. But most importantly, the Spirit of God is here. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place, and I'm so glad this morning. So let us receive you, Minister Howard, this morning. She shall come and bless us with the word from all high by saying, Preach, Preach. Minister Howard. Sing Let me
But in the mall, there was a shooting. So timing was everything. God has a way of protecting us when we don't even know how to protect our own selves. Oftentimes, my dad and my uncle, we all have conversations. A lot of times, I don't really be listening to them. <laughs> but the last conversation my dad and I had, um, he, we was at my nephew's funeral. And so he said, Renita, some things you don't need to get in the midst of. And so I said, Dad, God didn't give me the spirit of fear. But then I thought about that thing. <laughs> what if that guy had pulled out a gun? What if he had pulled out a knife? My daddy would have probably went out the back door. <laughs> but in reality, timing is everything. And especially in the world that we're dealing with now, we don't know people's mindsets. We don't know what they got going on. So sometimes God gives us common sense to just stay in our place. Got you, Dad. <laughs> As Christians, we know that it's a praying time. We see it every day. The killings, we see every time you turn on the news, it's something. To the point that we don't want to turn it on. But we know that timing is everything. Even with the deaths, if it wasn't their time to go, they wouldn't. But timing is everything. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We must know that no matter how good your heart is, no matter how pure your intentions are, and no, no matter what it is, timing is everything. But you got to know when to act. you got to know when to be patient. And you need to know when to speak. Time is everything. And that brings me to my first point. When there's time to act. See, Esther had to trust God. But she sent word to Mordecai to have all the Jews of Susa to fast and pray for three days. While she and her maids would do the same. And then, though it is against the law, she will go to the king. But Esther also knew that if she acted in her time, she would die. Because the words say, she said, if I perish, I perish. In other words, if I die, I die. But waiting those three days allowed God to work in her favor. So for three days, they weren't eating or drinking anything. When they got thirsty or when they got hungry, they prayed. I'm pretty sure that every person in here believes in the power of prayer. I know in this church family, we have seen what the power of prayer can do. Mm. But if I could just paraphrase just for a little while, I could hear while she was fasting and praying, she began to give God back his word. But she also had to meditate on his word, so when it was time to act, she would know his voice. She probably went to Matthew 4 and 45 and said, So that you may be the sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good. Sends rain on the just and on the unjust. But then she went a little farther and she made that thing personal. She said, let me go on over, Lord, and give you your psalm, your 23rd psalm. She said, you are my shepherd and I shall not want. When I go before this king, you know what I need. She said, you making me to lie down in green pasture. You leaded me the sound of still water. You restoring my soul. You leaded me in the path of the righteousness for your name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Oh Lord, you know without an invite to the king, I may perish. But oh Lord, I don't put it in your hand. I will not fear because I know that you'll be there. You said that you will never leave me nor forsake me. Oh Lord, you're going to prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. You're going to anoint my head with oil. My cup shall surely run over. Oh, because, you know, in the midst as I approach my husband, the presence of Haman 
will allow my husband to stretch out himself and accept me in. Lord, I thank you. But I thank you because surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. She didn't use prayer as a stall tactic. She allowed God to intervene. So when he told her to act, she could. When God tells you to act, that's when you act. Mm. See, Esther, if she would have act on her own terms, her life would have perished. Esther knew that not just her life was at hand, but her descendant's life was on the line as well. She had to do what she had to do. But God had to place her in a position as queen to make sure that his work was done. And even when God is working, he needs you sometimes just to be patient so that you will know that it's all him. See, after we act when God tells us, there's a time we just got to be patient. Mm -hmm. We must remember it's God's time and not our time. After Esther has the courage to go to the king and is welcomed by the king, she doesn't just jump right in because time is, is patient. But instead she invited him over. Not just him, but him and Haman to her, her banquet. She knew that the way to his heart was going to be to his stomach. And we still do that now, women. Esther knew she needed the king to be patient with her. Well, but I'm going to be real with you. If I know that my life is on the line, some of us, as soon as he said, what you need, we're going to start pouring out everything. Well, we're going to spill the beans. Yes. And sometimes that gets us in more trouble. Yes. Yes. We need to be attentive to the Holy Spirit. We need to think about what to say. Not just start spilling stuff all over the place. Yes. Sometimes you just need to take your time and let it all work out. Because it's God's timing. But make no mistake. God is directing the action of this story. Yeah. Behind the scene, God has been setting the stage the entire time. Something that Haman or Esther could really even imagine. Here's what happened the night after Esther invited the king to her banquet. Haman left. He was happy. He was beaming. He, he was telling them how, you know, he done been set up high. But he held himself together. He went on home and he was telling his wife and the friends, bragging how much money he had all about the promotion. And on top of that, Haman continued. Queen Esther invited me to a private dinner with just me. You know how they get. Just me, the king, and her. Don't even know that God is working right in the midst. Sometimes if you have too many people, it can get out of the way. But see, when God orchestrates things, he don't make no mistakes. His wife and her friends tell him, you know, and, and he says, Mordecai, even when I was on the way, he wouldn't bow down to me. And so that infuriated him. So they tell him, Bill a gallop, gallop, 50 cubits high. And then the first thing in the morning, you go speak to the king. <coughs> Get him to order all the Jews to be killed. Timing is everything. Mordecai has saved his life and hadn't been rewarded. <laughs> Timing is everything. Because if Mordecai had been rewarded, this decree that was in order would have went through. It wasn't by coincidence. The king asked his servant, what reward or recognition did we even give Mordecai for this? There was no reward. So Haman came. You know, he was coming with his little plot. And so the king asked, you know, what should be done to the man that the king delights to honor? Of course, Haman thought, <laughs> he was talking about him. So he suggested that this man be done a royal throw the king has worn, ride a horse the king has ridden, be led through the street by someone yelling. This is what's done for the man the king delights to honor. Ooh. The king thought it was a good idea and told him, go get Mordecai the Jew. <laughs> 
Go and take them on through. God timing is everything. Wow. I can look at Haman. I can only imagine how Haman looked all dumbfounded like, what? The man that wouldn't even bow down to me. Now you want me to take him through the streets? I don't went home and told my wife how you promoted me, but yet this man is that close. You want me to ride him through? You got to be careful. Because we don't know God's time. So instead of killing Mordecai that morning, he has to lead him through the city. He goes home with his head covered in shame. And have to tell his wife there's something about those Jewish people fighting against them. Just she says and just as he's beginning to express how he's feeling, his in his anger, the king sends his, his people. And so he's rushed. Come on back. Yeah, yeah. See, when you rush sometimes with time and you forget some things. Yeah. But when God got you, it's all right. Yes, yes. We see there's a time to act. We see there's a time to be patient. Yeah. But we also see there's a time to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So the king of Haman come to the banquet what the queen has prepared. And the king said unto Esther on the second day of the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted. What is thy request? And it shall be performed. Even to the half of the kingdom. Timing is everything. But she knew now it was time to speak. Then O Queen Esther said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we have been sold for bondsmen and bondwomen, I've held my tongue. Although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Then the king, as Eris answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he? Where is he? Who presumed in this heart to do such a thing? Now God has really given her time to act. He, she done been patient. And she gonna really speak the adversary, that old wicked haven right here. And the king arising from the banquet in wrath, and he goes out to the palace garden. But when he comes back in, this is why I love God's timing. God's timing is not like our timing. Because when he come back in, see, Haman is begging and pleading for his life. Uh -huh. But Esther is laying down. And so when he comes back in, it's, it's not always what it looks like. Right. The king just see him bound down and it looks like he's about to rape his wife. Jesus. So now he done made a decision. Mm. God's timing is everything. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it wasn't what it looked like, he wanted, he was begging for his life. Jesus. But what the scene saw with the natural eye mm. made it easy. So when he began to speak, they covered Haman's face. Yes, sir. Mm, took him on that out of there. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful the ditch that you dig for someone else. Yeah. <laughs> because that's the ditch that you might end up falling in. Yeah. See, you got Haman done built this 50 cubit for Mordecai, and now he's going to be hung on it. Mm. He made a decision real easy for the king. In conclusion, if you wait on God's timing, everything will be all right. God plans will cancel the plot of the enemy every time. His timing is not like our timing. Our enemies are used sometimes as distractions. But as Christians, we have to learn there's a time to act, a time to be patient, and a time to speak. No matter what time you're in, make sure that your actions show the love of Christ. Every action doesn't deserve a reaction. Remember, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And then when it seems like things are not working in your favor, seek God. God time is sometimes he's pruning your enemies so that you... So that you can see who you're dealing with. He is saying let it go. But sometimes we want to hold on. Well, he said let it go. 
Hmm. Because I got better for you ahead. He needs you to act and let go. Because if you don't, you'll find yourself in some unnecessary battles. But you have to remember the battles are not yours. It's the Lord. When you're going through, the Lord will teach you patience. In fact, your enemies may only grow in their resolve against you. And it's only an enemy when you allow them to have power over your life. And the simplest way to deal with them is to turn them over to the Father. And even in the midst of your greatest troubles, you can enjoy a peace and a calm. Because you know that it is out of your hands. But you have to be patient and know that timing is everything. Psalms 23 says, He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. It's not on my timing, but it's on God's time. Then he tells you, you can speak on it. But it seems when you speak on it, it may, it may feel like you're losing everything. How many of you know that communication is the key? We have to talk to God about our problems. But I like what Matthew 11, 28 and 30 say. Sometimes we like to stick to the first little part of it. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. But you need to read a little farther, because it says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He's just telling you to bring it to him. He got you. So you might, oh, God is so good, God. Mm. Perhaps today you've been suffering. It feels like you've been going through defeat after defeat. Setback after setback. You're down and discouraged. Feeling that you're fighting a losing battle. That can change for you today. Maybe you feel like you're in a nowhere situation. You have nowhere to turn. You can change that this morning. I want you to serve notice to the enemy. And let them know that you're on God's timing. That you want a relationship like Esther had with the king. The only thing is the king that you gonna serve is not man, but it's the heavenly father up above. There was a time, even in Esther time, that the king wouldn't have known who she was, but because of God's timing, woo, he brought it, but she'll know exactly, he would know exactly who she was. Mm. It was because of her relationship with the king. The king is waiting on you. <laughs> You have to have a personal relationship with him. It's your time. The time's right now to surrender to the Lord. Mm. In fact, the Bible teaches us until you enter into a relationship with Christ, you're considered an enemy of God. But God loved you so much that he wasn't willing to allow you to remain in that condition. How I know? <laughs> because his sin is only begotten son, who was falsely accused. They stripped him down and put him on scarlet robe. They planted a crown of thorns on his head. Thinking they they mocked him. They spit on him, but they took him to God's altar. His arms stretched wide. His nails and feet, I mean his feet and hands were nailed to the cross. They took him to a barber too. He stayed there all day Friday. Oh, death, do you have him? He said, yeah, I still got him. Wow. On Saturday, they asked him again. He was still there, says Bailey. Yeah. Oh, death, do you still have him? Oh, yeah, I still got him. But on Sunday morning, wow. he got up with all power in his heart, his hand, so that you might have life, so that you can have an intimacy with him through the shedding of his blood, through the perfect sacrifice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. He made on your behalf. Jesus. Timing is everything. If you don't know Christ, you burning up your seat. Even if you're in a backslidden state, time is now. This is a no judgment zone. This is a no judgment zone. The doors of the church has remained open. But the timing is now. It's your time. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what the next minute holds. But what you can do now is make a difference. An intimate relationship with Christ. I plead to you now. If you don't have a relationship with him, get one with him.
Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, how I love. How I love.
But she The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. And we're well, thankful this morning for all that he has done for us. As Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room, having blessed the bread and blessed the wine, he said that I would no more drink of the fruit of the vine and I drink of the new with my father, who is in my father's kingdom. But he said as often as you do this, you do show forth his death and his suffering to come again. Now we take the Lord's Supper in a communion set. <coughs> Preferably, we are all on one accord. But this is not for you to judge me or to judge your brother or your sister. <coughs> but Paul said, Judge yourself. Amen. Look at your own self. Amen. For in partaking, you partake damnation to yourself, not discerning the Lord's body. Amen. Minister Howard is going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And as she shall read, let these words that Paul shared with the church of Corinthians resonate within your heart. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, there is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone take it before, other his own <coughs> supper, and one is hunger, and one is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup which he has sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament, and my blood, and my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of this of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. Jesus suffered and died a gruesome death on the cross. Because man has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And God sent his son to redeem man back to him. For by most all things, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So God sent his son, the perfect gift, that he died. A horrendous death. That we would not have to die a spiritual death. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have life everlasting. They on the cross, they placed the crown of thorns on his head. 
They nailed him to the cross, hands and feet. They speared him in his side. Blood come gushing down. Those around the throne, they marked him. If thou be the son of God, come down and take, come down from the cross and save yourself. And the thieves that hung beside him say, take us with you. One said, the other said, we ought not to berate this man for he has done nothing wrong. Father, when thou enter into thy father's kingdom, remember me. And there on the cross, Jesus said, thou shalt be with me this day in paradise. Never being baptized, but one believed. And there became a recipient of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you today that whoever you are, wherever you are, may be, whatever walk of life you come from, male or female, rich or poor, black or white, God loves you. And he sent his son to die for you. And the son suffered for you. And now this day, if you have not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, this is your moment, this is your opportunity to say, Lord, I yield. There's no magic bullet that you have to do this morning. You don't have to run. You don't have to jump in the pews. All you got to do is say, Lord, I yield. Yes, Father, I accept you as Lord and Savior. I believe yes. that you are the Son of God. If you shall believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, thou shalt be saved. Yes. This is for those who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. There at the table, the disciples seated around Jesus. Jesus took the bread and he blessed it. Took the wine and he blessed it. We are not able to bless the bread and the wine as Jesus did, but we are able to ask the Father to intercede. Ask the, our Lord and Savior to intercede on our behalf. As Deacon May shall lead us in prayer. If there's one this morning, as you sit in your seat, if you have only his brother or sister release it this morning, if you are not saved, just this morning, it's never too late to accept Jesus as Lord. Timing is everything this morning. While you still have breath in your body, yeah. you can be saved. Yeah. Amen. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Christ, would you give us a correction or something along? I know what's the blood. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
still observe a few that's trying to open their package. Another one. Amen. In the back. In the back. In the back.
Jesus died on the cross, and I know it was the blood that saved me. Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room. Having blessed the bread, he broke it and gave to his disciples and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Take, you eat all of it. Having blessed the cup of the wine, he gave to his disciples and said, Drink, ye all of it. Say that he would no more drink of the fruit of the vine, but he drink of the new with us in his father's kingdom. As often as we do this, we do show forth his death and his suffering that he should come again. After they had died, they sang a hymn and they went out into the Mount of Olives. We do not have the Mount of Olives to go out into, but we do have our homes and our highways and byways. Go and tell the story. Or how Jesus suffered and died on the cross for us. They buried him, but he rose again on the third day with all power in his hand. And because of that, timing is everything. In due time, Jesus died for our sin. Let us rise to our feet and let us, the choir may lead us in a closing selection. Come on. We have come this